You talked about listening to God's voice in the scriptures, but how can I figure out God's exact will for my life? Do you believe that God will still speak audibly to some people? Hey, everyone. Welcome to That's a Good Question. Great to see you today. I'm Pastor John. I'm Pastor Nate. And we're excited to talk today about God's Word, about the questions that you all have asked about the Christian faith, and especially about the sermon that was preached yeah. on Sunday by Pastor Nate. Yep. Thanks for preaching. First Kings 19. Yep. Excited to hear about Elijah. And uh, we got lots of good questions about yeah. God's Word, mm-hmm. as well as about mental health. So two mm-hmm. big uh, topics we're going to yeah. talk about Great. today. So let's dive right in. Here we go. Question number one. What do we mean that the Bible is God's word? Hmm. Great question. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to start. Sure. Uh, I often say to Christians that there's two two verses that if you've just become a Christian that you should probably memorize. Mm -hmm. The first two most basic verses, and they both are 316s. Mm -hmm. John 316 and 2 Timothy 316. 2 Timothy 316 tells us that all scripture is God-breathed. So the Bible is God-breathed, like it came out of God's mouth. And I think the short answer to the question of what do we mean when we say the Bible is God's word? We mean it came out of God's mouth. Yeah. It's from him. Uh, because it's from God's mouth, it also has his character to mm-hmm. it. Uh, that's why we use the word inerrant when we talk about the Bible, meaning it's without error. It doesn't have any errors in it because it came from God. And God doesn't have any errors. He doesn't do anything wrong. Um, he is perfect. He's always a truth teller. And so mm-hmm. every Word of Scripture is without error. It came from God. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah. I mean, I, I know I had someone yesterday who asked me, they said, you guys have such a high view of Scripture, of God's Word. How do we make sure we don't idolize the Bible? And I thought that was kind of a unique question. I, I think I know what they mean, but we're not saying that this is God. It's right. not God, but it is His Word. And it would almost be like asking the question of how do I separate Pastor John from the things he says. Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily that his his statements are who he is, but it's certainly there there's a relationship there where it, yeah. there is a separation, but there's also a lot of overlap. When I've taught our membership yeah. class, people have asked that question and I've said, um, well, go home to your spouse and try to tell them, sweetheart, <laughs> yeah. I love you, yeah. but I hate your word. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Right. They're so they're not the same, no. but they're so intertwined. Yeah. Um, that you almost can't separate them. So yeah. God and his word are so entertained. If we love the Lord, we have to mm-hmm. love his word also. Amen. Can't separate those things. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Good. Cool. Great question. All right. Second one, very practical. Here we go. In the back of some Bibles, there are specific verses referenced if you're struggling with something, for example, fear. Mm-hmm. Is this an appropriate way to hear God's voice through the word, or is it not a good way because you don't have the whole context of the mm-hmm. verse? So real quick, they're talking about things like study Bibles, right? Yeah. I put uh, my favorite one up here on the front of the table, the ESV study Bible. It's a great one. So it's got things in the back, uh, verses for if you're struggling with fear, anxiety, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. What do you think? I would guess probably some of this question came out of yesterday. I try to share really practically one of the things uh, I've done as I've battled uh, with some mental health issues is just memorizing some scripture. So it's always on the top of my mind. I can always access it. And so... Yesterday, I shared one of them, Isaiah 41.10, and then a couple different verses from Philippians 4. I'm wondering if kind of what they're asking is, you know, should we be just taking this one verse and looking at this one verse? Well, number one, I'll say I love that question and that concern even, that mentality of we need to read Scripture in its proper context. Yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly, and even as I'm looking at one one verse of Scripture, even one sentence— you have to be aware of the context yeah. it's in. With that said, I'll also say that we have to be careful, too, that we don't ever use Scripture as a tool and use it as a guide because we're so afraid that if we take one verse or one passage or one chapter or one book and we go, because I, I know I've felt that before. I've been reading one passage of Scripture. I go, this is really good. And I have to go through my whole brain going through my understanding of the whole realm of scripture of what God teaches and go, okay, I got to make sure I put the proper emphasis on this. Because I even remember one time I had a guy actually tell me, uh, it was kind of a weird situation, but he was talking about how God rejoices in the death of those who don't follow Jesus. And I thought that, and I, I started looking through scripture and I saw Ezekiel 33, 11. Mm-hmm. 
God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So he had gotten there by reading one passage, but he had missed the whole context. So I love that mentality, but don't let that freak you out so much that you can't go, okay, when when God says, do not be anxious about anything, it's pretty clear. It's yeah. pretty straightforward. So for me, when I'm dealing with anxiety, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I know what that means. Now, there's context around that in Philippians 4 that will help me understand it more deeply. I would highly encourage that you, yeah. any any scripture that you memorize, you also get to know the context around it. But realistically, sometimes in those moments, I only got about 10 seconds before I'm starting to swirl down. And, and sometimes one line, sometimes even one word from the scriptures will help just pull me back to the reality that God wants me to be living in, that yeah. he is good, he loves me, and that I can trust in his word and I can use his word. It's yeah. kind of going back to 2 Timothy 3.16. Yeah. It's not just God breathed, but it's also useful for our life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's okay to use those resources. Yes. I use those resources as a pastor. Mm-hmm. I've even, uh, dare I say it, I've even Googled once or twice yeah, where yeah. the Bible is, hey. a, is a verse on a certain topic. Uh, so it's okay to start there, but yeah. you do have to keep in mind the whole mm-hmm. context of Scripture. And 100%. we've taught some of that kind of stuff in different classes at Peace. Uh, creation, fall, redemption, yeah. um, you know, the, the whole spectrum of how do you understand the Bible as a book. Because it is it is a book, and oh. and uh, most books you read yeah. front to back. You know, yeah. like it's, it's meant to be read yeah. within context. Yeah. So that's, that's great. great stuff. Awesome. Next question. You talked about listening to God's voice in the scriptures, but how can I figure out God's exact will for my life? Do you believe that God will still speak audibly to some people? Sure. Good question. It's a great question. Uh, I, I I figured that this would come up because if you missed the sermon that a lot of these questions are coming off of, we talked about how the primary means that God speaks to us today is through his word. And any other means uh, that you might kind of have a sense that God is speaking you would always go back to the scripture because if anything ever contradicted what is taught here in the scriptures, you would know that's not coming from God. God would never contradict his own word. That doesn't even make sense. Now, I think what the question is getting at is, hey, there's so much general truth here, but what is God's will for me specifically for my life? Well, surprisingly, there's not actually a ton of times throughout the scriptures that it talks about God's exact will for all people. But I always remember that in 1 Thessalonians, because in chapters 4 and 5, there's two different times where back to back, it uses this language of God's will. Here's the first one, 1 Thessalonians 4, and then this is verse 3. It says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. So number one, if you want to know one of the ways that what God, God's will is for your life, your sanctification. Once you come to faith in Jesus, uh, he wants you to grow in Jesus. He doesn't want you to stay exactly where you are. He wants you to study the word, grow, and become more like his son, Jesus. In 1 Thessalonians 5, this is starting in verse 16. Here's another time where the Bible talks about what the will of God is. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So I understand the mentality. I think I there's times where I wish that God just gave me my map. You know, yeah. in 2024, you're going to do this. In 2028, you're going to move here. In 2037, this is what I want you to do. Uh, God, I, I don't believe it's normative at all that God would lay out that kind of plan. But what's neat is God actually gives us some clarity in the scriptures, sanctification. I mean, even I think of this. Give thanks in all circumstances. How many of us are doing that? How many of us are living deeply grateful lives in all things? There's so much to work on here. And a book I recommend, Kevin DeYoung has a book called Just Do Something. He talks about how there's a lot of times where God um, isn't as maybe concerned about the exact specific thing we do in terms of what color and what color shirt am I going to wear today? Ah, oh, God, please. I was reveal. literally just thinking of that. I was trying to think of a yeah. test case, and that's yeah. what I thought <laughs> yeah. of was. You know, you mentioned those years. What am I going to yeah. do? You know, next yeah, year yeah. and the year after. What about what am I going to do at eight o eight a.m. Yeah. eight o five a.m. eight ten a.m. You know, and yeah, if you run through that, I you know that idea of all right, you get up in the morning. What am I going to wear today, today, Lord? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God doesn't 
for most of us, yep. I would say a huge majority of us, God does not speak to us in that way and show yep. us exactly what to wear. But does God care what we wear? Yep. He does. Yep. And actually, the Bible gives us some yep. guidelines yeah. for that. It doesn't yeah. boil it down to you should wear this shirt and these pants right. and these shoes each day. Uh, sometimes maybe my wife wishes that God would specify for me which of those to wear because I'm not very good at that. But yeah, uh, but Scripture does say things yeah. like in my daughter's room, we have uh, a verse from First Peter yeah. in the room that talks about inward beauty versus outward beauty. Yeah. So God does say some things about modesty, yeah. about what it means to appear godly and beautiful in a godly way. Um, and yet it doesn't say this shirt, these pants. Yep. God gives us so much biblical wisdom. And I do think, uh, as I had lots of discussions following up on our, our recent sermon about how we determine God's will and how God is speaking, there's so many times where when we get a sense of God leading us somewhere, um, what God is doing in that moment is he's either using our, our own minds to help recall biblical wisdom that we've, uh, that we've received through reading the scriptures and hopefully through prayer, asking God for wisdom from the scriptures, or maybe it's uh, a, a good, good counsel of a godly friend. I know Pastor John at many times has given me uh, just kind of great direction on whether I want to do this with my personal life or something with my work. And He's, he's just using biblical wisdom that has come from scriptures for him. The Bible talks about that. Um, I would just say uh, for the specific will for your life, uh, the good news is, is that God has given you a general guide here. And I would even say more good news is God's given you a brain and he's given you a lot of freedom to have the fun of exploring how you live this out practically yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the fun of, I think, the Christian life and yeah. obedience, right? Is yeah. that if God just spelled out at 8, 8 yeah. o'clock, you do this, at 8.01, you do this, yeah. at 8.02, you do this, that wouldn't, where would be the, the requirement for faith and obedience in yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Totally. Uh, the second part of that question was this, does God still speak audibly to some people? Okay. Um, my answer is he can, but I think like you already said, we shouldn't expect it, right? right. It's not normative. Yeah. Can God still speak audibly? Yes. Do yeah. I know people that have... That have had the Lord speak to them audibly? Yes. Uh, has he ever spoken to me audibly? No. Yeah. Um, so can he? Yes. But should we expect it all the time? No. Yeah. I even think if you look to the scriptures, there's times where since we're spending so much time with some of these um, some of these biblical people like Abraham, Moses, even Elijah, we're walking through right now. You go to the New Testament, Peter and Paul, and you see there's times where God's speaking to them audibly, uh, clearly. One of the things we need to remember is that there were so many people of God in Israel and people of God in the New Testament church who probably had almost more of an experience like we do daily where they're receiving God's word whether through the scriptures and the different forms that they had that and have the bound Bibles that we have today. But that we see some incredible, amazing moments where God's speaking in a really special way for a significant moment. Maybe there's a covenantal change that God's in. These are big, big moments that we get to be a part of through God's word. But we don't need to feel bad if kind of your daily experience with the Lord is what two pastors uh, here have where we wake up, we get into the word, we God yeah. speaks to us through it, and then we live out, we try to do biblical wisdom throughout the day. And that's a beautiful thing. I, I think the point that we were getting at yesterday with uh, with Elijah's story from First Kings nineteen is sometimes we want the loud, big, splashy stuff, but sometimes, and I would think normatively, God works through His normal means of speaking to yeah. us through His Word, and that's exciting. Yeah, totally. Praise yeah. God that He gives us that. Yeah. Awesome. Next question. Here we go. How would you receive it if someone said they had a word from the Lord for you? Does Peace Church believe in prophecy? All right. Great question. Great question. So if somebody comes to you and says... I've had it. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure you too. probably have yeah. too. Yeah. Me I mean, too. I've had it happen a ton. I'll tell you exactly what I say. I, I thank them for being bold enough to approach me and share something that they're kind of processing through. I usually ask some questions. Like yeah. I'll say, is this a sense you're having? Did you hear any sort of audible voice? I've, I've actually never had someone say, I audibly heard this. Usually it's something like, I feel like I heard it, but kind of inaudibly in my head, or I have a sense about this. And then the next thing I always say is, I'm going to go right to the scriptures and see if this 
lines up with it. And I'll tell you about one time. I actually had someone, um, when I was at the church I was serving at in California, I had somebody come up to me and they said, I have a word from the Lord for you. And I said, yeah, well, I, you know, I went through kind of the pattern. They said, the word is that the Holy Spirit is not at, and then they named a church that we partner with, uh, that I was good friends with the uh, main pastor there. And I I just started pushing back right away because I, I asked some questions initially, but already with my knowledge of what the scriptures are and what I had experienced, this was a gospel-believing, gospel-preaching church. They're biblically faithful. I knew these people well. And I started pushing back right away going, I, I actually don't think that that is a word from the Lord. So I'm not saying that I would never receive it. I've had times where actually somebody has just shared something that, uh, for me, a lot of times it sounds more like some general biblical wisdom. Yeah. And I love that. Like I've had people say, I got, I feel like God's telling me to encourage you that I love that you're preaching the Bible and to keep that up. And I go, yeah. I'll receive that. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. That's, that lines up with scripture says, preach the word. So right. I, I can see that. To be honest, for me, a lot of times I wonder if we're maybe not framing it the exact right way. Um, maybe something like, hey, I sense God. Uh, you know, wants me to encourage you in this. Like, that's great. I'll just say, saying that you have a word from the Lord or saying that God said this to you, I think you need to be just a little bit cautious to do that because it's a big you, deal. When you say you're speaking for God, I mean, think about prophecy in the Bible. Yeah, Deuteronomy 18 yeah. Uh, in the Old Testament says that if a prophet says that they're speaking for the Lord and the prophecy doesn't come true, mm-hmm. then they should be stoned. Yep. That their life is on the line when they mm-hmm. claim to speak for God. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah, like you, I've had similar experiences where what people have said, I feel I have a word from the Lord for you, or they'll say, I yeah. feel like I have something from yeah. the Lord for you. What they're actually saying is, I sense a leading from the Lord that I should say something like this to you. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. You know, yeah. like often those are encouragements that align with yeah. scripture, and that's great. But yeah. I think it'd just be helpful yeah. to be really specific about what you're saying. Do you feel like right. God actually delivered a specific revelation for you to deliver? Um, and you're willing to put your yeah. life on the line for that? Or is it more like you feel like the Holy Spirit is leading you? You were reading scripture. You were praying. Because mm-hmm. I've had that where I'm praying and I'm reading scripture yeah. and I'm like, and, I, and somebody yeah. comes to mind. And I just feel like I should pray for them or I should encourage yeah. them. And I'll just send them a text. Hey, I'm yeah. praying for you. And I just wanted to encourage you that this or yeah. whatever, you know, just keep up the, the, you know, the ministry that you're doing or something like that. And, you know, the Holy Spirit can lead us in that way. Yeah. But I wouldn't call that the Lord spoke to me and said, I should say this to you. Yeah. You know, I, didn't, I wouldn't put it at that level. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, one of the co-hosts of Mom Guilt, a podcast with new episodes every Monday. Mom Guilt is a podcast about the daily struggles of motherhood. Stephanie and I share real experiences of Mom Guilt and how we have found freedom from that guilt through the gospel. Listen to us on resoundmedia.cc or wherever you find podcasts. So the the second question there, does peace church believe in prophecy? I mean, we're walking through the life of Elijah. We see the prophets throughout scripture. There's prophets in the New Testament. Um, We are definitely open. I'll just give, I'll ask two questions that I think could come alongside these types of questions is number one, uh, is, isn't that impersonal then? Like how I, I get that we have the Bible and God's speaking to us, but this isn't written to you or to me. This is written to all of us. And in one sense, I, I understand that. But in another sense, I think we actually need to have a bigger view of God. Uh, we are not so important and special that the world revolves around us. But God is so big and he's so capable, he's so knowledgeable and he's so able that I do believe that when God, through the Holy Spirit, inspired these words to be written, he already knew about John Delger. He already knew about not just who you are, but what you would need. He knew about every moment of your life. And he knew that about me. He knew that about you. And all of that, we can't can't even fathom this being a personal book to all of us. Sure. But it is. Yeah. And we we could never write something, of course, that was was mindful of everyone of all time for all yeah. of history. So broad, but also so personal and so intimate and so specific yeah. that each morning when you open God's word, he is speaking to you. He's speaking to all of us, but he's also speaking to you. So is this impersonal? Not at all. 
In fact, our God's so amazing that this is incredibly personal for all of us. Yeah. So that's the first. The second thing I, I just want to, I, I could see people going something like, well, what's the problem with just like, you know, is there an issue in saying, hey, God told me this and it's wrong. You know, you brought up the Deuteronomy example. So to show biblically why um, that doesn't really align with the scriptures, I'll use a personal example because I had a I had a close friend who found out that he had stage four stomach cancer and he went to a church where uh, they lots of people in the church told him, you are going to be physically healed. God has told me, God has said, this is God's word, that you are not going to die from the stomach cancer. And he did die from the stomach cancer. And that uh, misuse of saying that God was speaking about something that he clearly was not, because God's never wrong. And so they were mis understanding. They were, um, hopefully they weren't just making something up. I, I think it, I would be more charitable than that. I yeah. think they were probably grappling and trying to figure out what it means to be prophetic today. Yeah. But it was so bad that his wife, um, his now widow, was really having trouble having faith in God because as far as she understood, right, God promised, God said, and his word is always true that her husband was not going to die from this cancer. That was not God. It was someone mishandling this. So it is incredibly serious, not just theologically, biblically, but personally, we can do a lot of damage if we misuse what we would call the word of the Lord right. or God's word. Right. Amen. Yeah. So I think that question, you know, do we believe in yeah. prophecy? I mean, yes, because yeah. it's in the Bible. Yeah. Um, and do some people say things today that they would call prophecy? You know, I think some of it comes back to asking that question. What do we mean by the word prophecy? Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of the stuff that you and I just talked about. So I think some people might use the word to say things that we would say, maybe use a different word to yeah. describe that. Yeah. So does the Lord still speak today? Absolutely. He speaks primarily through his word. Yeah. He can speak sometimes to yeah. us in an audible voice, yeah. sometimes to us in a vision or a dream. Yeah. He can do that. Uh, should we expect it? No. And is he delivering new revelations that will be different from the Bible? No. No. Certainly not. Uh, no. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. All right. So the second big topic that came uh, through in the sermon and that people asked questions about was mental health. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor Nate, you were super vulnerable yesterday, and that was awesome. Thank you, brother, for sharing some stuff from your own personal right. life. Yeah. So here's one of the questions that came through. Question says this, I love Pastor Nate's vulnerability. Love this about our pastors. My question is this, is Pastor Nate getting support from leadership for the mental health stuff that he mentioned yesterday? Yeah. Oh, that's a, question. a very thoughtful and caring question. Thanks to whoever asked that. Um, I'll just say, in case you're watching this and you haven't seen the other sermon, I just shared, I, I'm not, I don't hide this, but I, I had never had a reason to include it so far in my, my teaching and preaching at peace, but because 1 Kings 19, Elijah deals with some really deep depression and anxiety I shared about that I've received a what would be like a clinical diagnosis of what they call depression and anxiety. I know that hits a lot of people in different ways based on what your experiences are with that. Some of you might be thinking, well, yeah, I get sad and anxious or worried, don't all of us? And I know what you mean by that for sure. I, you know, regardless of your thoughts on this, um, all I know from my experience is that it's just been a deep and consistent battle for me. And so I got to share that. And the question here was, um, am I getting support from our leadership? I'll tell you, I know because I don't, I'm not, don't talk about it all the time. Um, I know for a lot of people, probably what I shared yesterday, maybe what took you by surprise. I'll tell you, I, two people at least who for sure weren't surprised were Pastor John and Pastor Ryan, because I shared with this, this with them really early on when we started ministering together. And they've cared super deeply and kindly, been really gracious to me through the process. And I've tried to return the favor, too, because mm -hmm. we all got stuff that yeah. we struggle with. I mean, most of you know, and you've shared in sermons some of the physical health yeah. struggles that you've dealt with. So we check in with each other. We pray for each other and we care for each other. But thank you for caring enough to ask. That. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. And alongside it, yeah, like I, I've had my own, you know, struggles yeah. as well. And you've been a huge encouragement to me. So, yeah, I think all of us as pastors and elders and leaders, we try to encourage and support yeah. each other yeah. through all that kind of stuff. Great question. All right. Last one we got here. Do you have any resources for those struggling with mental health? Yeah. Great question. Um, you and I talked about this a little bit beforehand yeah. uh, because it's uh, there's so much stuff that's not good out there. 
Um, yeah. We wish that we had just a huge be yeah. able to just run down a bulleted list for you. Uh, we do have a few things we want to share, but the short, the first thing I want to just say is that this is a huge challenge to find mm-hmm. great resources yeah. for mental health. Uh, it's really hard to find a good Christian counselor. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. There are a lot of guys that that profess to be Christian counselors mm-hmm. that don't line up with uh, yeah. the Bible and what it teaches. You know, we've had people come to our church that have gone to a Christian counselor and have received unbiblical advice about, you know, about marriage, mm-hmm. relationship to divorce, mm-hmm. about sexuality, about mm-hmm. how to deal with um, depression and different issues. So yeah, I'm sure this topic as well. Yeah. 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 So, um, so the first thing I want to just jump out and say is that we actually don't, we don't have sort of one specific right. counseling firm that we say, right. this is the one they're yeah. bulletproof. Um, if you want to contact us separately, feel free to shoot one of our pastors an email because we do have a couple of counselors that we recommend. Uh, we don't want to necessarily put those names out yeah. there and broad because we're always talking to those yeah. counselors. We love them. We believe in them. But we're always talking to them about, you know, where are they at on certain issues and are they aligned yeah. with Scripture all the time? Yeah. Well, when you ask this question, the way my mind goes, and I think probably Pastor yeah. John, too, uh, probably you go to books right away. What are the go-to yeah. books to talk about? And and I know, I know, Pastor John, you have one that's yeah. been helpful for you, but I found in a lot of my time working with people that realistically sitting down and reading through a book and then applying it to your life, I, I, I love reading, I love books, but on this topic uh, specifically, I'd even just say a couple other initial things. Number one, I have to repeat it because I believe it and it's been the most meaningful in my personal experience is the number one resource we, I went over this yeah. at length, but going to God's word, yeah. um, talk to your pe- leaders in your church, pastors, small group leaders, even if they haven't had personal experience with this, if they've had personal experience studying God's word and with the yeah. Lord, um, they can help you with it. It's so funny. Pastor John and I, we talked about sexual, biblical sexuality and gender the other day. Yeah. And some of the feedback that both of us got is like, well, have you guys had personal experience with this? Who are you to kind of speak on this? Mm. And I've actually had a couple of people now since last Sunday with me talking about my personal experience with mental health. They've said, well, should you be really talking about this if you're so close to it? I mean, are you the most objective person to be? <laughs> so it, either way, whether somebody's got experience with this or not, if they know the Lord, if they know his word, um, you can you can connect with them and talk yeah. to them. I would say too, uh, because I didn't I didn't get super in depth with this, but just generally finding good professional counselors, especially if it's not just like a mild mental illness, but if you have moderate to severe, finding good professional counselors. We do pastoral counseling. Yeah. We haven't gone through all yeah. the training to deal with the different. Um, you know, these, some of these really in-depth, difficult topics. So find some good resources. Um, I would say even talk with, uh, personally, I've talked with some of my uh, medical practitioners, just asking them questions. Again, like everyone, we can't guarantee that whoever your doctor is, is going to approach this um, in exactly the right way. But so whatever you're doing, whether you're talking to a medical team, whether you're talking to a counseling team, whoever you're talking to, Talk to some professionals, but always, always, always weigh it against what the Bible teaches here, too. Yeah. Because I, I, I've one of the biggest questions I've got follow up is the medication question. Yeah. And let me just speak to that quick, because there's there's really two extremes, I think, that we need to be a little bit wary of. There are some people who would say on this topic, no medication ever um, you never address it. I, I guess the question I would ask you and the challenge is, do you have that mentality in every sphere of your life? No medication ever. There might be some distinctions with some mental stuff, and I get that. But um, just I would ask, are you being consistent in that? But also in our modern world, there are people who are so quick, and I actually think this is almost more common today. They're so quick to just medicate, medicate, medicate before you even – read your Bible before you even try to eat healthy and exercise before you try some of the basic ways, just pumping, pumping, pumping medication. Yeah. I'd be wary of that too. Yeah. I, I think you don't want to do something that's not going to, that's going to make it so you don't get to address some of the roots of the, of those symptoms that you're experiencing. So I'd be careful of that too. There's a lot of space in between there. And I would love, I, I've actually, I'm going to have a lot of sit downs with a lot of people because a lot of people have been messaging me just as a pastor who's dealt with this. Yeah. Hey, I'd love to talk th- with you about this, about for my child or for me. 
I'm I'm here. I'm available. I'm looking forward to those conversations. Um, I'm not a professional in all these things, but I'd love to sit down and talk with you. And I know you got a you got a book resource yeah, too. Yeah, right? absolutely. I wouldn't add yeah. anything to what you said about that stuff. That was a very balanced approach. I love right. that. So uh, one of the resources I'd recommend is this. It's called When People Are Big and God Is Small. Mm -hmm. So this one's specifically about um, anxiety, especially as it relates to uh, people. Yeah. Um, it's an excellent book. But in general, I would recommend books by guys like Ed Welch, uh, guys like Paul Tripp. Uh, CCEF is the name of the organization that they're mm -hmm. part of. Christian Counseling Educational Foundation, maybe Sounds something like right that. CCEF, uh, Paul Tripp, uh, Ed Welch, guys yeah. like that. Um, just some great biblical, yeah. solid resources. They've been a huge help to yeah. me. This book is pretty marked up because I've read yeah. it a few and times. You recommended that to me. It was super helpful. Cool. So uh, just be willing to ask people what's what's been helpful, what's been good for them, what what tools have been. And again, I wish we could kind of lay out an ABC. Yeah. Do this, do that, then do this. Yeah. Um, but we can't do that. But I'm going to just end with, do we have any more questions? No, nope, that's it. I'll end with this yeah. because this is what our sermon was fo focused on. But I'm, I'm so convinced, I'll say it again, that I think I will talk to people who will say, hey, I've tried the Bible thing. I've tried to hear from God. It didn't work for me. So I'm moving on from that. And I would just, I would just ask you, did have you really? Because it's easy to say, hey, listen, I I read a verse from scripture. I still have these thoughts. I still have these struggles. I want to be clear. I study God's word all the time and I receive so much encouragement and I'm so strengthened by it. It doesn't make all of my problems go away. Yeah. Uh, but I I would challenge, I bet there's some of you watching right now who might be saying, Hey, I heard your sermon. I've tried the Bible stuff. Didn't work for me. I would challenge you to say, did you really go all into it? Yeah. How much scripture do you have memorized? How frequently yeah. do you come back to it? Because it's really easy for us to say, hey, tried it, didn't work. I'm not saying that it will make everything go away. Yeah, this is not a 30-day magic no. diet. That's not, right? But That's not how it works. I, I am saying, both from my personal experience, but also just from what I know from God's word, is that the primary and most helpful thing you can do is listen to the Lord, receive his word, be filled up, be strengthened, and know that whether it's depression or anxiety or whatever else you're facing, God's word is our primary yeah. and first go-to for building us yeah. up, for sustaining us, and for healing us. Yeah. So Amen. That's that was great. And actually, Scripture speaks to the exact the specific uh, example that you gave about struggling with something and going to the Bible yeah. and read Romans seven mm -hmm. and then Romans eight. Think mm -hmm. about what the Bible has to say about our constant struggle yeah. day by day as Christians. Yeah, great stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Pastor Nate. Yeah, thank you. Thanks everybody for your questions. Thank great you. stuff. Have an awesome week. You can find that's a good question at resoundmedia.cc or wherever you listen to podcasts.